Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. Another week in the books for the Astros. Before I actually get into that, uh, talked about a new setup this week. Really, the only thing you see difference in the background right now, at least, is the mirror right here. So, uh, most of the stuff on this side stayed the same. Obviously, new bed. I'm actually doing this like my mic is set up on this small tripod here which you can't see obviously in the camera shot, but um, my computer now is on a nightstand instead of my old dresser, so uh, there, there's a little different sort of angle that's understandable. Um, this might be temporary, I'm not sure how this is necessarily gonna work, <laughs> but uh, I mean, there's a lot of different things in my room, the way things are set up, just can't really see it from this one camera angle, but got the mirror, which is obviously different there, and Still behind me, I got the trophies and bobbleheads, but obviously that's all blocked off here. If I go to one side here, you can sort of see the trophies there. And there's bobbleheads below that, which you can't really see. Uh, but yeah, my, my room is completely different right now. Just <laughs> um, And yeah, this the reason I actually put my uh, mic on this tripod here is because this nightstand's a little lower to the ground than my dresser. So I thought moving using this tripod here might help the sound quality so we'll we'll see here um, in fact I was gonna do this from the room which is right next to me which is an empty room right now which has my old dresser in but uh, that wasn't gonna work out that well either a lot more work of things to move around there so I just thought I'd get on and do this here um, but yeah not, not a whole lot different from your vantage point at least for me with my bed over here to my right and of course the mirror, the dresser is connected to the mirror. I kept the desk exactly where it was with those trophies and bobbleheads. But yeah, there's a lot of differences for me. But anyway, Astros baseball. So, did very well this week, 4-2. and two. Um, On the road, I mean, they just finished up their road trip, their nine-game trip, where they went 6-3. and three. So, I mean, you take that every time out. Uh, if you just win your series, which is the goal in every day basically every new series that starts the goal is to win the series so the Astros have done a pretty good job of that um, trying to think here so obviously they played three in Boston they won game one pretty easily they jumped out to a big lead early on and then they sort of carried that to the win Tuesday they they I'm trying to do this without the phone for now, but um, Tuesday they won. It was close in the later innings, 5-3. Uh, the Astros did break it open, which obviously is very important with our subpar bullpen. Um, but we ended up winning, I think, 8-3. to And then Thursday, this was a very frustrating game. Obviously, we had won the series, winning the first two here. Uh, but this was a very frustrating, your bullpen really cost you the game, felt like. Um, especially when the Astros got a three-run lead. Now, Granke in this game only went three innings, so after that happens, obviously you're relying on your bullpen to get you 21 outs. Is that right? No, 20, eight, 18 outs, I want to say. If Granke goes three, gets nine outs, 18 sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, we'll go with 18. When your bullpen needs 18 outs, that's pretty tough to... Um, unless you can score like 10 runs, and the Astros put up, I think seven runs, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to look at it here in a second, but um, yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll look at it here in a minute, but the bullpen definitely cost them, I, I believe, this game. And then the weekend, they win Friday, lose Saturday, win Sunday, win today. They blew them out today, 14-3, to I want to say. So, um, But yeah, winning series, obviously, is the goal of the Astros now nine games over 500. Uh, they're two back of Oakland. Oakland played well this past week, so we actually lost a game, I believe, uh, when you were looking at last week. So, let's see here. Yeah. Um, trying to think here. So, uh, we'll go to the phone here. We'll, we'll try to make this uh, sort of uh, six games this week. Obviously, the off day Monday. So, they win this Tuesday game 5-1. to one. Um, If this phone, my internet access right now is not great so this might be a challenge here and now all right now I 
got to find my place. So, all right, I was looking at the wrong game. They won Tuesday 7-1. to one. So I was looking at the series prior. I played Boston here six times in the span of nine games. So, and this thing won't even... Oh my God, let's see if I can pull this up some different way here. Go to my scoreboard here. And yeah, this is taking a long time to load. So, bear with me please as I... I have to go back over this. Let me just try to think if I wait for this to load here. So, Tuesday's game. Here we go. <laughs> Framor Valdez got the start here. So, he, he did well. He's been good in his three. Now, I believe today was his fourth start back. Um, but in this game, he went seven and third, five hits, one earned run, struck out eight, didn't walk anybody. Move the ERA down to 1.47. Um, Paredes came in to get the final two outs in the eighth inning. He did walk a batter, which is, yeah, that's about right. Usually he walks multiple hitters. Uh, but he got two strikeouts. Uh, this was another, uh, this is like, you know, Paredes' is fourth straight. We'll talk about him in a minute here because it gets worse. But at this point in time, this was like Enoli's fourth straight appearance in a low stress, you know, just go out there and, you know, try to throw strikes, basically. Um, and in these, you know, appearances, he's been okay. He hasn't been perfect. He still walks hitters, but I feel like he also hasn't really given up runs. He does strike hitters out as well, but, um, I mean, Enoli Paredes, he's proved this year that last year was sort of a fluke. And it's tough because we know that he's got strikeout stuff, and he should just rely on, I mean, his fastball and, you know, the way he throws it. And Anyway, he wasn't terrible here. He did walk a batter, struck out two, got through the eighth unscathed. And then Blake Taylor finished off the ninth. He gave up a hit, struck out two, but, you know, Blake Taylor's just another guy who's sort of there. He's just another lefty in the bullpen that's average probably at best. Uh, Blake Taylor also had a pretty good year last year. Both these guys, uh, last year's, you know, were big parts of the bullpen, I feel like, last year. Um, but, yeah, it, it's <laughs> – that game wasn't an issue because the Astros, you know, they came out. They came out swinging. So, uh, you know, I think Altuve hit a home run if I go back here real quick. Um, so, Correa hit a home run. Uh, Maldonado had an RBI uh, two run actually two run single. Correa had an RBI double. Alvarez actually got hit by a pitch which drove in a run. And then Gurriel had a single and Alvarez had a home run. So the Astros scored seven quick runs first four innings and then he just let Fromber ride and they got the W that way. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Paredes and Blake Taylor were just sort of there to get through the innings basically after Fromber went seven and a third. Brilliant baseball um going to tuesday obviously after the win there tuesday this is a uh, well actually wednesday sorry they had the off day monday there but wednesday win this one eight to three like i said it was tight so oda rizzi got the start wasn't very good so oda rizzi is sort of the guy that you know sort of the weak link in the rotation so to speak with everybody else has been pitched so well and you, have to, you do have McCullers coming back here. In fact, he pitches on Tuesday. Astros have an off day tomorrow. Uh, but Oda Rizzi goes five innings. He wasn't terrible. You know, three earned runs. You really have to get through six to, for that to be considered a quality start. But the three runs, struck out six, walked a hitter. Uh, he got the win in this game, which is the crazy part here. But, you know, the offense, who's been doing great, you know. And Javier finished this game out. He went the last four and only allowed one hit, struck out three, but Javier was great. Got the save. Uh, not that it was a safe situation, but, you know, the whole rule, if the reliever goes more than two innings or whatever it is, uh, it, the whole save uh, stat, the whole save thing is kind of bizarre, the way they the way they rule these. Um, or the criteria, I should say, uh, of how a save actually works here. But he was good. That was that was good. I think Javier should be used a little bit more, I feel like. And I feel like he's going to need to. Uh, sort of in the late innings. Like, instead of 
you know, having him pitch four innings and then having him down for the next two, three days, I don't think is the way I'd use Javier. I'd use him, I'd use him more in the late innings, especially considering the options you have at your disposal is basically just pick a guy out of a hat and cross your fingers, hope for the best. I mean, Javier's got stuff to strike people out, and he proved that in the playoffs last year. Came out of the bullpen last year in the playoffs, and he was great. In fact, he was one of their secret weapons in that bullpen, and we used him you know, quite often. So Javier's going to stay in that bullpen. Uh, he's valuable there. I just think that he could be used, you know, instead of, you know, ha- having him sort of as your long man. And they actually brought Belak back up. Apparently, um, Joe Smith went on the IL. So, Belak was back up. Talk about him here in a second. And Nivaldo Rodriguez is still here. Um, and also, Ralph, is it Ralph Garza Jr., something like that, pitched today. He got called up for Enoli here, which we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but, yeah, the offense really, you know, the Red Sox closed the gap there. It was 5-3 to three going into the seventh inning. The Astros did hit a sack fly there to actually um, make it six to three, but you're still sort of, you know, the bullpen, you know, with Odorizzi only going five, Javier was cruising, so you felt okay about that. But Bregman with the two-run shot in the eighth made it eight to three, which really made you feel good about the end of that game. But yeah, Javier, it went the final four innings there, and Odor- Odorizzi got the win. So, but he wasn't great, and we'll talk about him here in a little bit as well. I'm trying to foreshadow things here. Thursday was the frustrating game. Chance to sweep. Astros have done this a lot this year where they win the first two or three games in a series and then they have a chance to really sweep the team and knock them out and they just can't do it for some reason. So that's the only frustrating part I have with the Astros so far this year. Uh, They've won 12 of their 19 series or yeah, 12 of the 21. So if 12 series wins this year, seven series losses, Say a little bit of 12 series they've won, they've lost seven series, and they've split two. The two splits the second series of the year against the Dodd uh, Angels. Uh, they lost the first but won the second in a short little two game set. And a few weeks ago, they played the Dodgers for two, lost the opener, and then won the second. So those were the only two splits. Every other series, well, they've won 12 and they've lost seven. So, um, and they're nine games over 500. So, I mean, but the only real sweep, I'm trying to think, obviously the first series of the year, they swept Oakland in four. They also swept Texas at home in four. Uh, but, I mean, they've, had, you know, they, they've struggled against the bad teams and been pretty good against the good teams, which is sort of weird. Um, but, yeah, this game was frustrating. I mean, they, they the, the, the bats were there. They scored eight runs in this game. Um Granky was not good. He only goes, like I said, three innings. Uh, seven hits, four in a run, struck out two, walked a batter, gave a home run. ERA goes up to 3.68. And then now it's the musical chairs here in the bullpen to get 18 outs. And a lot of people didn't do their job here. So this was a weird game, the way it sort of went. But the Astros kept fighting back. I mean, they were down 2-1 after two innings. They scored two in their top half of the third to take the lead. Three to two. Boston comes back with two of their own. So they're up four to three after three innings. The Astros have a big five run fourth or fifth. Four four run fifth. <laughs> and at this point you're feeling good. Bullpen obviously scares you, but with that, you know. This point was at seven to four. Seven to four. So at seven to four you're feeling like a three run lead. Should be good enough, but um, here comes the bullpen here. So Belag goes two innings. The first inning he was fine. The second inning he gave up a three-run shot to Christian Arroyo. That's what tied the game at seven there. He wasn't good. Blake Taylor comes in here. He actually gets the loss and blows the save here. Blake Taylor. Uh, He's proven that last year was a fluke as well. Blake Taylor, another guy like Enoli who went on the IL, came back. And, you know, we're seeing what we have here. But he only gets two outs, hit, three runs. Only one was earned. And this was, there were two misplays really in this game. So Kyle Tucker, stupid. God, this was stupid. All right, 
uh, pop up to the outfield. It's sort of medium depth. There's a run on third. I think there's one out. And Kyle Tucker's lining it up. He's under it, basically. But I feel like he focused too much on getting in a position to where he could throw home rather than making sure he catches the ball. Now, there was a little bit of wind, but that's no excuse. He dropped the pop-up. He dropped the fly ball. So that easily scored the run. Uh... I don't know if an error was charged there. Probably. I guess the uh, 200 runs there. But later in that same inning, Correa pop up, which he went out in the outfield to get. Um, and the wind again was blowing, and Correa, who you know had was under it at one point, and then he had to veer off to his right, and it fell and hit the ground. And two errors there that really cost the Astros and didn't help out their bullpen at all there. Um, both of those, I think, was was with Blake Taylor on the mound. I'm trying to see here. Yeah, it sounds right, but the defense didn't help out Taylor there. Uh, the, but the, the Correa pop-up actually was ruled an out because it was ruled an infield fly rule. The runners did advance on the play, but it didn't really cost them the... I guess you don't count that as an error because, well, the batter was ruled out, so... But the runners didn't move up, so I don't know necessarily how that's ruled. The Astros did have two errors. Obviously, Tucker's play, which was that's there's no excuse for him. I mean, he was there. Correa, I mean, Correa, you, you can with the all all the great plays Correa makes. He, he I allow him to screw up every you know once in a while, and the wind was blowing, and you know it was sort of a weird sort of I don't know, but. Uh, all in all, that was a bad inning. And Blake Taylor, yeah, didn't get help from the defense, but also he wasn't great anyway. So I don't give him a pass or anything. But when it comes to the fly balls, I give Correa more of a pass than I do uh, uh, I do Kyle Tucker. And then Paredes comes in, and yeah, this was his first tight situation with the game tied. He comes in. I believe there's two outs in the inning, right? Runners on second and third, so first base is open. So my thinking here is if he can't find the strike zone, first batter, he's got that base open, so that's okay. But you can't come in and just throw balls left and right and start walking guys in, doing this, that, and the third. He faces three hitters, walks the first batter, no surprise there, hits the second batter, uh, which drives in a run, and then walks the third batter, which t uh, br brings in another run. So Enoli gets pulled. He d doesn't record an out. Uh, Gives up two runs there, both earned, walk two, and yeah, Paredes is who he is. So the four appearances he made prior to this, which were in low leverage situations, wasn't great in these appearances, but wasn't bad, as bad as he had been in previous, you know, high leverage. Paredes just can't do it. And um, heard this on the radio, uh, Charlie Palillo, who does a show on ESPN here in Houston, um... He said it perfectly. You 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 could handpick a fan out of the crowd, and they would probably have a better chance at throwing strikes than only Paredes right now. And Paredes also gets hurt in this game. Same sort of injury. I don't know exactly his diagnosis here, but I do know that it was the same scenario that he had earlier in the year. We they called they called the trainer out, and the trainer takes him off the field, and he's back on the IL. That's the reason Ralph Garza is now pitching, or actually or up with the big league team. Um, he's not going to see significant playing time, but um, yeah. So, I mean, you look at the bullpen, you know, b gives up, you know, the three runs. Blake Taylor gives up three runs. One was earned, but he deserves no, there's no excuses for him, even though there were two missed pop-ups. Paredes doesn't get an out. All three runners reach base, two walks, hit by batter. Brooks Raley comes in. He actually goes to and then he, you know, Brooks Raley's a guy I've been okay with. You know, he's not perfect, but when it comes to our bullpen and the garbage we have in that bullpen, he at least can get outs. He might walk a hitter, he might give up a few runs, but he can actually eat up or get outs. I feel like um, inning in a third for him did walk or gave up two hits, didn't walk anybody. Um, and then Nivaldo Rodriguez got the final inning, but at this point the game was sort of out of reach. All in all there, they give up five runs. So after, you know, Boston had tied it there in the fifth. That was the whole Blake Taylor. Let's see here if I can figure this out here. Yeah, well, hold on. No. Let me 
think here, fifth, sixth. Yeah. So Blake Taylor, Enoli Paredes, and Brooks Raley. Raley just gets the final out there in the sixth after Paredes just couldn't do it. He couldn't throw strikes. Hasn't been able to throw strikes all year. Uh, you get five runs there in the fifth, and that makes it 12 to eight at that point, and you got nine outs to work with. And yeah, there was also, you know, Dusty got tossed in this game. There was a ground ball by Guriel, I believe, the following inning. This is the top half of the seventh, I believe. But um, there was a tapper. Guriel tried to make it seem like it hit his foot, which it clearly didn't. Uh, Christian Vasquez, the catcher of the Red Sox, picked it up, threw it to first. They doubled off, or they got Alvarez, who didn't really know what was going on. Dusty came out to argue. It's an unreviewable play, which I think is kind of stupid. Um, but, yeah, Dusty got tossed for arguing. The whole game was just weird. It just wasn't, yeah. And the whole replay review, everything should be reviewable in baseball except balls and strikes. Like, you bring in replay to get the call right, yet you have all these stupid rules of what's this is reviewable and this is not. It's just like it's like football, because football has those stupid rules as well. Like, you bring in replay to get the call right, yet you exclude all these, like, I can't even tell you all the plays that are non-reviewable. I just think it's sort of a stupid thing. I mean, like, at the end of the day, you're trying to solve a problem, but you have this loophole, or I, I won't even get into it. I just think, I think everything should be reviewable except balls and strikes, basically. I think that's how this should work, but they wouldn't have won the challenge. Uh, looking at the replay, it clearly didn't hit Yuli Gurriel, so there was no argument to be made. Gurriel tried to act like it hit his foot, and he didn't run. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, either way, that it was 12-8 to 8 at that point, so I didn't think that was going to make a huge difference. But, yeah, I mean, they, it was, yeah. Dusty probably looks at the replay after he gets tossed and is like, yeah, I was wrong there, but whatever. Um that was just a frustrating game because at 7-4, you felt like you had a good chance, of course. Don't let the bullpen ever trick you. Paredes back on the IL, which is probably where he belongs. And when he gets hurt, I just send him back to the minors because there's just he's not good. He can't throw strikes. He can't throw strikes. And you can't be a reliever or a pitcher, period, in the major leagues if you can't throw strikes. And he just can't do it. Um, so there's that. Um, but yeah, so you know, Granky only goes three. That sort of set the tone for the game. But I thought the Astros' offense, with how good it's been, it might have had a chance there to to you know win that. But the bullpen proved uh, well. They just didn't really prove much. They just showed us what we've seen all year. So uh, there was that. Um, but you still won the series, so I guess you're not too upset. But that was a frustrating game. They take two or three over the weekend, winning six to four. Offense sort of relentless there. They were down in this game. Um, let's see here. Urquidy got the start. Just coming off of his worst start of his career when he gave up six runs to Toronto the, the previous weekend. Uh, he actually goes seven innings, gives up three runs, was in line for the win here. Stanek comes in the eighth, gives up a home run. That actually ties the game at that point. Four or four, but the Astros score two in the ninth. And then Presley closes out and gets the save. So that was good there. Uh, they lose Saturday 5-2. to two. They were down 4 nothing. This was a Garcia start, his first loss and his last six starts. So he had won five straight starts. And then, uh, yeah, it wasn't great in this one. He was good early on, but gave up, you know, one in the fourth, three in the fifth. And then, yeah, things from there, the Astros did... Score two runs on back-to-back home runs by Kyle Tucker and Robel Garcia. His first home run, at least with the Astros. Um, trying to look here at the bullpen, obviously. Garcia only went four and a third. Blake Taylor got an inning and two-thirds in. Actually clean innings for Blake Taylor. Rayleigh came in, got two outs. He actually allowed a run there, so yeah. Blake Taylor's ERA at four point. 2-2. Rayleigh's at 6.39. Of course, Rayleigh's got a bigger body of work. And then Nevaldo Rodriguez just sort of cleans up the end there. He goes an inning and a third. Walked two, but didn't allow any runs. Nevaldo Rodriguez actually hasn't been bad. He gave up, you know, a few runs to Boston, I believe, last week in the Memorial Day game. But other than that, 
I mean, he's not going to see any significant time, but uh, I mean, really, I mean, like like I said, you're you're picking a name out of the hat for you know bullpen guys and hoping that they can yeah. But yeah, they lose this one five to two there, and then today they the offense explodes and Fromber was great again. He goes what, seven innings, I believe. Seven innings, yeah, five hits, two runs, one was earned. He walked three hitters, a little high, only struck out two, but did lower the ERA to uh, 1.42. And then Ralph Garza got the final two innings of work, did give up a run, two hits, but the Astros had this game really from about the fifth inning on. Uh, you know, they scored two in the fourth, two in the fifth, four in the sixth, two in the seventh, two in the eighth, and one more in the ninth. 20 hits altogether, 14 runs. And, yeah, halfway through this game, it was basically out of reach for um, for Minnesota. So uh, that sort of wraps up the week there for you. Four and two. Can't complain there. The Astros now come home off day tomorrow. And then they got two with Texas. Texas swept them back in Arlington a few weeks ago. So it would be nice to get the wins here to sort of, you know, we did sweep them at home, four games set. But that series so far this year is 4-3. Four wins for the Astros, three wins for the Rangers, but uh, yeah, we got some uh, payback, I feel like, in order here at home for them, and then we got three with the White Sox, or four, the White Sox, who are very good this year, so interesting week, but we're at home, so hopefully we have seven game, or what is it, six games, four and two is usually the goal there, so if they can go ahead and do that, I, I really can't complain again, but um. All in all, things are good. We know what the issue is with the Astros, and it's going to be the bullpen, and it's going to be the same guys. Um, you know, James Click talked about you know, solving this issue in, in, internally. I just don't think that's an option. And they refuse to bring up people in the minor leagues that haven't proven themselves. You bring up the same guys. And, uh, I mean, I have, you know, Dusty Baker, you know, after the Padres series a few weeks ago, we talked about this briefly, but... Dusty talked about, you know, well, I was upset with Dusty personally because of the decisions he was making, but I think he's doing the right thing here. He's letting our starters go a little deeper. He's letting them, you know, he's stretching them out seven innings, 100-plus pitches, which I think is the way you have to go. Um, but with Fromber and Luis Garcia, you know, two guys there, uh, you know, aside from, you know, Granke's three-inning outing against Boston there on Thursday, he had been pretty good at at least giving us innings when we desperately needed them, going deep there. Urquidy went seven, which was nice to get out of him there on uh, Friday. Um, you'll get McCullers back Tuesday, so what they're going to do here is McCullers will get the start probably on some pitch limit would be my guess, and they're going to piggyback with Odorizzi after him. So if all goes well, that would be the only two pitchers you see. Uh, we'll see how things shape out there, but um, yeah, we're kind up here on 30 minutes, so I sort of want to shut things down. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think here. You know, we talked about the injuries. You'd only be back on the IL. Joe Smith got put in the IL, so you bring up Ralph Garza, and you bring up Brandon Belak for now, bullpen-wise. Brantley is back. Talked about Diaz out last week. Broke the or fractured the hand in Toronto there. Uh, so you'll be without him for quite a while here. Don't know exactly what they brought up. I know Garcia, Robel Garcia's up. Taylor Jones, for some weird, crazy reason, still on the uh, roster here for us. Uh, but, yeah, you know how I feel about Taylor Jones. I could go on and on there. Um, you know, a lot of reserves actually got in the game here today because once, you know. But Brantley's been good, looked very good. Uh, Kyle Tucker hit a few more home runs, so he's up to 13, leads the team. Uh, I think Altuve, Correa both have 11. Sounds right. Home runs, that is, on the year. But let me see if I can. Chaz McCormick, he had a home run today. Um, uh, Castro is the other guy who's on the I don't even think I brought this up, but Castro has been on the IL for a good number of weeks now. He should be coming back. I think he's... Had a rehab assignment, so I think he's on his way back. Garrett Stubbs uh, caught. He got 
got the start today, and Maldonado did not catch today, so there's that. Um, but yeah, really everybody got in the game today because after after the game was out of reach, we just sort of used our reserves. So like Taylor Jones came in as Brantley was the DH, so he took over there. McCormick came in for Alvarez, who was out in left field today, and then Robel Garcia came in and took over. Uh, for Guriel, but yeah, so that's my Astros week in review there for you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like your thoughts, leave in the comment section below. Like this video, share it with your friends, all that good stuff on YouTube. And I will talk to you next Sunday night as we wrap things up here at 11:32 p.m. A little later, but the setup today was a little different and interesting. But yeah, wrap things up there. We'll talk to you next week.